Hello, and welcome to Urban Hood Money Talk. It's a fact that we need money to enjoy life and focus on the things that we really like. I'm your co-host, Ali, and I'm here with Mushi Buyan. So what made you join us today, Tao? To learn about uh, this subject. Ah, awesome. This subject, what is it, work from home? And I assume it's, you... It, it's very difficult. Uh... Uh, when you are a manager, how do you deal with your employee? Mm-hmm. I want to, to listen. Mm, awesome. Okay. Uh, and what do you do? I'm a, now I'm between jobs mm-hmm. and uh, 20 years experience in uh, IT. Okay. Uh, my last uh, position was a, a department a, a manager of a development uh, department. Okay, I see, I see. Hmm. I see. Okay, so is it like you know you you said you have an IT experience? Twenty years. I was a programmer, a software manager, project manager, and the last position is a, a department manager. Okay, so when is it program manager? Was it within IT? Tall. Excuse me. When you are program manager within IT, you manage the programs. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 Um, we work. Time? We work. We work with uh, TFS. You. You know. TFS. Yes, it's task for all the programmers. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay. By by hours, and mm-hmm. you know uh, what's how much time they they need to finish uh, her ta- their, their task. Okay, okay. So, you know, you kind of or a liaison between technology and the uh, and, 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 uh, and, and, and business. And business. Yes. Yep. So, course. yep. I wanted to let you know that throughout these sessions, this session next three months, our plan is offering these classes in three months. You will have a technical how to do jo- the job. And the job and the technology side, we are going to be touching Microsoft Dynamics 365. What it is, is an ERP, all the data, those who is new, I know we have people in the room do not have an IT background. So this is also for you to have consider transitioning your career in IT and, and then get into a job where you can work from home. Some of you may already notice that last week I have posted in my WhatsApp group that I have a 19 role open. And so first of all, thank you those who sent me your resume. And just want to let you know that, you know, when I saw those resumes, to be honest, until now, I have not found one person that I can even consider. It's not because you don't have that uh, you just uh, you do not you just uh, you do not have IT background, but for the job requirement, I have the roles. I need somebody who understand what is this 365 Microsoft Dynamics 365 about, and also have you used it? If you have, do not used it and you do have no experience, it's going to be hard for you and also for me to replace some of the resource I have within my organization, okay? So that's why I wanted to make sure that by the time next three months, some of you might be taking it a little bit advanced, right? I mean, taking extra initiative outside the classes because we are going to be meeting three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and I think Saturday or Sunday, one of those days. So we'll combining our time weekdays and weekend to go through all these skills. And in the skills, what you are going to be doing, just also I have a another screen I just shared with you. What you are looking at, this is Microsoft Dynamics 365 software, cloud-based software where everything runs in the cloud. You do not have to install anything zero on your machine, but at least you will be familiar with what it is, how people use it. At, at the front, at the top, you are looking at sales dashboard. We all understand when it comes to sales, what that means. Everybody knows, you know, when you go to a grocery store, 
and inside the grocery store, what they have, what product they have on the shelf, what product they keep by adding more and more, what they are offering less and less, depending on their geographical demography and also people, uh, what they buy, what none, what, and the other thing also, they, they're looking for demand and the profit margin. They look into cert, certain things, every business, and then they put those product on their shelf. So what it is, you are looking at sales dashboard, you can see that, that you know, so on the sales side, you know, what happens these people. On the, on the, there are certain key things that business look for when it comes to sell leads come in when leads comes in that lead becomes some sometimes before lead there is a kind of kind of suspect and prospect we talk you the term in the business and that is that kind of open up a lead and inside the lead then there are process every business go through and then at the end those process lead becomes your customer or you sell something or whenever that is then you take the funnel from the funnel it becomes more one and one relationship and those rel relationship is called crm so crm stands for customer relationship management so far what i shared i want to make sure those who is not non-it did not get confused so this training is is going to be about hoping to understand some of this. You don't have to be expert. All you just know those terms, what that means, and you will be able to explain to people, even uh, in the job or in, in the experience. Third thing is going to happen. After having, while having these classes, same time we are going to be doing a implementation for same product what we are using at our company. At our company, as I am doing Urban um, Food Alliance, Urban Food Alliance is, is the one nonprofit organization what we do, run. In this nonprofit organization, we use, we will be using that Dynamics 365 and we will include some of you in those projects. That way, while you are getting training, you are also looking at a career that you're going to be looking for, and then you are going to be prepared for your exam. Same time, you're going to have hands-on experience, and those experience you'll be able to reflect, showcase on your resume. So when somebody asks you, even myself asks you, do you have any experience? Then if you say no, and then it's hard for me to replace uh, some of the resource I have in within my team that they're not meeting my expectation, then bring some of you here. So that's why my the reason I did I'm doing this program. I thought, hey, not only I am going to be able to support my charity, and that's those those who registered. You know, I shared with you, you know how you can register. All the details are there. The money we generate to support the charity, but same time is going to help some of you to get the job. There is no guarantee. I will not be able to give every 100% guarantee you will get the job. But one thing I can guarantee you to you, that if you do your best, and if you put your time and effort, and you are being humble to learn from me and from the people I'm going to bring in, I can guarantee will take you somewhere. I have a quick question for you. So I use Microsoft Dynamics at work currently, mm -hmm. but it's very limited. We just put in, you know, the activities that we perform with our uh, clients. So will this um, opportunity allow us to build certain programs for clients in the future if we do happen to get a job? Um, that's a very good question. Um, uh, let me... Uh... And I said, let me share with you um, this. And I'm going to address your question. Just give me a second. And while I'm listening to your question, anybody else has any other question? And yeah, then... I have a similar question, basically. This is Ajidya. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, so currently I do work as a product manager and do support this uh, Microsoft Dynamics. Mm -hmm. And I keep talking to all the stakeholders in NYC Health. But mm -hmm. I have, I do not code. Basically, 
in this whole application, when I'm talking to all divisions, I only uh, help them solve their issues and all those things. And sometimes new requirements get established. That's mm -hmm. what I do. Um, with dynamics at my office or in my company, but I don't go too extensive with my dynamics. And I, all I'm just managing the program and this, in this program, how it's going to help you so that you can consider is this for you or not, this program. So since I mentioned to, with you that we are planning to study for an exam, prepare you for an exam, which is a 910 MB 910, Microsoft Business Solution 910, that's not an IT exam. Those who is non-IT, is mostly is going to be business centric general information if you are information about this platform so in dynamics 365 there are three main key products come into it customer engagement in the past it used to call crm customer relationship management that's on the left and on the left side on the crm you can see the tie it or ce or you will hear customer engagement it ties more most modules is sales module, marketing module, customer service um, functional, and the field service. Think of this this way. We all under, have somehow that the phone service or cable service or FIOS or whatever it is, right? Whenever you have these services, you, you bought it from, let's say, cable. For example, that the cable company, you uh, I'm using Verizon. I call Verizon, Verizon and right away ask me certain information about me and then they can pull my information. When they pull the information, they know in their CRM system, sales system, they know what product or service I bought from Verizon. And based on that, that they say, okay, now we got your account. And then what questions do you have or what problem you have? Why are you calling? If you say, hey, you know, my bandwidth is slow and this, you know, all of a sudden when I do download things, it takes very slow. And then they will look at my service agreement. Sometimes they try to do some troubleshoot from their end to see if my whatever technical difficulty I, I'm facing with my bandwidth, is it fixed? It's not. Then they will say, we'll, we'll open a ticket and then they send a technician to solve our problem right? My problem that what I'm facing. This is common for most of you and most of you who is non-IT, you understand this process. Does that make sense? I want to hear from somebody yes or no who is non-IT. Does that make sense what I just shared? Are you guys with me? Non-IT folks, are you guys with me? Yes. <laughs> yes. Stay with me. Stay with me. Don't fall asleep. It's too early morning. I know for some of us, Sunday is uh, early morning. All right. So what happens in this software, what they do, they call something called field service or technician. They will use this field services functionality and someone who said, you know, my company does it you know, but I don't have much experience. So throughout this session, we're going to be touching each of this module that whenever you send a technician, technician knows exactly what problem happened and technician doesn't know how much you pay, how much it is, depending on how much you are paying, what discount you got, what location. A lot of the information technician doesn't know because Nowadays, you understand the information tapped and for all the security about the information has to be maintained. So Dynamics 365 field service takes care of all the customer service related stuff, customer service and operation related activities here, stays there. So you will go through some of those areas. Then by the time you are done this module, Hulk CRM, you will, have, you will have a high level good understanding. What is it does as business function, non-technical, not how to do all this stuff, all you know what it is. But then on the right side, you see the financial operation and ERP. I have people reached out to me, they say, hey, I have an accountant, I have accounting degree, I have the, and I took some uh, digital certain, uh, security exams and I have a certification, I'm not finding a job. And can you advise me something? 
And when I'm looking at this person or others background, say, hey, you have financial background, you have some uh, accounting background, why don't you consider yourself putting together, together something called finance and operation? Sometimes we use the term called dynamics F&O. F&O, that term you're going to hear a lot. So maybe you can consider yourself spending more time understanding better these areas. So this way, when you are positioning yourself, you are positioning yourself as an expert in FNO or ERP side, finance, where it touches about all the, so when I say finance and operation, it touches areas like your general ledger. It touches your, your chart of account. It touches your account payable, account receivable. It touches your vendors, all those vendors agreement, all the vendor vendors data, you know, what order, procurement, purchasing, all this stuff here. So as you are going to learn some of these, you'll be able to communicate with you or with your employer when you're looking for a job in that area. So you are kind of going to position next three to six months with us that you are expert in that area. And while you are working with us, that will get you also some hands-on experience in that area. That way, when you are applying it, it's not you have no hands-on experience, okay? So you will be, some of you are going to get there. Or some of you say, hey, you know, I have logistic background. I have manufacturer background. What career I want to consider? Supply chain management. You know, nowadays is a huge demand. That's something that module you can see what this is, this is, and then you can position yourself that direction. Okay. Excuse me. Sure, go ahead. What about the marketing automation uh, module in the, on the CRM? Yes, on the left side you see the customer marketing functional consultant and marketing side. If you have some digital marketing or digital. Uh, product sale experience, or you like that work, you can position yourself, your CRM expert, and your, you can emphasize more and more of your background in marketing side here on the CRM. Okay. 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 Uh, so, so far what we covered CRM, we covered ERP. Now, some of you, some of you say, hey, I'm an IT guy. I love to make my hands dirty. How can I do it? And is there any way I can expand my career where I do not want to go to office every day or even two times, three times a week? Is there a job I can apply for it and upgrade my skill so that way you can position yourself work from home and in that area? That's our comes power platform. What it is, think of this. Every company has more than one system, one software, and multiple technologies, but everything touches customer, patients, your, your employees, all different roles we take in life, their information. So how are you going to bring that information into a product where everything connect together, giving them a 360 view of customer, 360 view of their employee, 360 view of their vendors, suppliers, all of those, right? That's where something we call it integration. Integrate those data here. That way uh, it gives you 360 view. And Power Platform is the one that allows them connecting any other system out there. You can bring the data and then you can merge them, mesh them into one solution. That way people who is non-IT, they don't need to know. Even some IT people don't need to know all the details. How did it got the data? Microsoft opened up this called Power Platform. And in the Power Platform, you say Power Apps, uh, and, and then you have a Power BI, and then Power Apps, and then Power Agent. I think you were, some of you know some of those terms. And recently also Microsoft announced that they are going to be working with, with Chat GPT. You, how many of you heard about the, that? What Microsoft doing with the Chat GPT? Anybody yeah. knows? Yeah, I heard about it. They, they, uh, one, are they partnering with them, or did they did they buy them out? Because uh, they're going to be using to, to house 
their data. I guess they're going to retrieve data from them. Yes. Like, yeah, first of all, to answer your question, at this moment, Microsoft is partnering with them and they own certain part of the business. They invest, they're investing $10 billion. As soon as Microsoft announced they are going to be investing $10 billion to take the certain portion of the business, it, their valuation of chat GPT went high, huge. And I'm sure yeah, everywhere billion. you're hearing 30 billion as a, yeah. their valuation. This is like unheard of. But you said the reason Microsoft going after that, I'm sure all of you know in 2023, 24, chat GPT is a big threat to all businesses, starting with Google. Nowadays, everything we look for, what do we do? Call Uncle Google, call Google, right? Google do this, Google do that, or Amazon, Alexa, do this, do that. This is what happening nowadays, you know, that with chat GPT is not only going to do this, it's going to do your work for you. A lot of it's write paper, write books, even write codes for developers. If it's going to be that intelligent, that powerful, Microsoft is looking, how can that, the bundle that within the product that is going to enable the business much more powerful. So Power Platform is going to be way more powerful coming on. Currently, they announced they're going to be connected that with their being that search engine product, okay? But it's coming. It's coming to be part of this platform. It's just a matter of time. So back to what are we going to do? Those who wants to be a little bit more advanced in IT side and they say, I want to get more hands-on, more dirty, you're not only going to learn this platform, you are going to learn how to customize, configure, develop solutions or using CRM, ERP solution, this. But we are not going to get into development in next three months or six months. It's, it's impossible, but we're going to get to you at least the flavor how you can do it. And then maybe if there are enough interest, next I'm going to do a program for a, little, a lot more details in, in development program for this Dynamics 365. Is that make sense? What I shared so far? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So can can I ask a question if you don't mind? Of course, please. That's the whole idea that here okay. we So yeah, it's just in continuation to what you had in said mentioned in the previous session. Basically, everybody knows who they are best, right? As you mentioned. And everybody has their forte skills that they can enhance and take their career path uh, to a certain level after leveraging your training for the next three months or six months. Mm -hmm. So actually being a actual user and using this right now, I don't, I'm not, personally, I don't know how the admin guy who does the, all the Azure technologies on all these modules in, but I do support, and my forte is project management, basically, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And I have the capacity to uh, take the views and be a liaison and try to get the deliverables done. So in this training, do you can you give us a high-level flavor? Like after three months, if I tell you, like, my forte is this, can I achieve this? I'm not good at coding, so I will not, I don't need to know the NTA administration uh, flavor part of uh, this uh, MS Dynamics, you know, there right. are security models also, which I know, like, and there is an email piece, which they, we allow to send email through MS Dynamics also, mm -hmm. like, you know, they have auto notifications features. So just can you give us a high level uh, flavor, I would say, to everybody, like, suppose I tell my forte is this, where do you see all of us or who, as me also? That's my question. Right. Thank you. Do you You're see welcome. do you see my desktop here slide? Yes, yes, I see target candidate. Okay, target candidate. That's why I want to make sure that I address some of the people like you who said, hey, I do not want to go all the details, but what's the role or what do I think that in next after three months can I position myself? Yeah. With, um, in a raw job role is not only going to give you freedom of not to go to office <laughs> every day class and yeah. you will be better positioned to find a job work from home is that what uh, you are asking yeah. right 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 yeah awesome 
So what you are looking at, I know some of you, even many of you in this room right now are also saying, hey, I don't have an IT background, but I want to transition myself IT. How can I do that? And as I was getting this kind of question, I put my hat to into that. I thought, okay, who do I want to be in the program? Or who do you want, what role you want to take? That's all up to you. On the left side, you said non-IT role. So this is all what we consider non-IT role. We do not want to know how all this product works. Think of that analogy that, uh, that I have been using before, the car. You, all I want to go from point A to point B. I don't need to you know, tell me how engine of Honda or engine of Lexa, Lexus, BMW, Lamborghini, Bentley works. I just do not need to know any of those for you. But as a non-business guy, I do want you know the difference of features, difference between Honda, Lexus, Bentley, at least know those features. That's what I'm expecting. And also we expect from the people who is going to be working in those type of project, ERP and this. So on non-IT like roles, or you can consider business analyst that, you know, some, those who, you know, is, is thinking of starting that, hey, you know, I have all this certification, project management and training in the community, outside the community, I have those, but I cannot still find a job because some of those project management job, let's face it, it's just like, <laughs> I feel like it's just like they're disrespecting you, who you are. Some of them are going to offer you that type of money and hassling, it's not worth talking to those recruiters somewhere around the world. They have no idea how business works in this country. So as a business analyst queue, you can take a business analyst, you understand that's all the features of all this, and then you understand each business, marketing side, your supply chain side, your customer sales side, or your operation side, or your inventory side, or your finance side, whatever problem they are facing, that you are the person who uh, will be able to get that information from them and make sure, communicate with them, this is the problem you are trying to solve. Is that correct? Business is going to say, yes, it's correct. You exactly understand what problem I'm trying to solve. Once that is done, then you, some of you may have experience in the domain, some type of some of you worked in, in, let's say, in healthcare, healthcare or pharma or nursing or other retail, warehouse, whatever you have that is great. If any type of industry you work different role, non-IT role is going to help you to start talking that, their language, the business language, then they will look at you, not only subject matter expert, their industry expert, plus you know how the implementation they're going to make or what product they're bringing in cloud, you'll know. So if they ask you, hey, you know, I'm thinking that you know, to have a car is going to be, if I push my gas within seconds, it's going to give me 60, 70 miles. Is Honda going to do it? And you said, no, Honda is not capable of doing that. That if that's your number one priority, then maybe you need to look into like a BMW. It does seconds, it goes like that, right? Because of this, you don't need to know all the details. That's oh good, you know. That means my budget from twenty thousand budget to I have to consider budget double my budget. And some of the you know, this business has the money. All they just want to know that this is my priority from zero to sixty. Within seconds, I can go. So that communication you can do. Okay. So and then some of you saying I don't like to do any of this and I'm very green. How do I get into it? Quickest way is testing. Because we need people just work with the business analyst, just sit there to understand as they are going through, you are going to be listening over and over. Business is going to keep telling you, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want. Then whenever your technical team he has says, okay, I have the solution for you, now go test it. Test it. And then business doesn't have time for test it. They need people like who is doing software testing. And then because you know what business wanted. So you'll make sure that as software gets more and more improved or more features coming in, that you will be able to not only testing 
everything from the previous did not break, plus it meets business need, and then you will do pass and fail. The testing, project management, some of you have some project management experience, but you, it never been in one focused area. This is also like what we have. Right now I have in my program, I have more than 10 project managers in my team. That, you know, so I need, I don't, there are smaller groups of each business unit, finance side, your account payable side, account receivable side, right? Smaller project manager that they need to make sure work closely with them, know their day-to-day -day operation and find out what requirement they have, right? All those things that project manager can focus. At the same time, these project manager also knows some of the capability of Dynamics 365. So that way, if they say, can Dynamics do that? Some of those things you might be able to answer, some of them you don't. So then you're going to come back and say, I'll get back to you. Let me go to the experts. So this is all communication pretty much. You're communicating with the business, non IT focused. Now, some of you have an IT focused. So if you say the IT focused and then you want to take it to next level, so throughout the sessions, we are going to do, as I said, um, it's going to be uh, experience. You know those who the DevOps, who heard about DevOps, right? Many of you heard about DevOps, what is it, right? Yes, yes. We are going to be using DevOps that where some uses Jira, some uses like Microsoft platform, DevOps and Azure DevOps. So for our case, Jira is not one. We are going into going to implement that uh, DevOps on, on Azure. And then as BA, QA, and SME is, is gathering all the requirement, instead of dumping all of this stuff in a document, now it is becomes a more Scrum and Agile mod model. You guys already know that, right? So. <laughs> We are going to do this, that model in live with you guys and others can, within the class, you're going to see that, you know, this is how BA is gathering all the requirements and this is how BA is documenting it. And when it gets document gathered and somebody project manager, product manager on the right side, you see the program manager, product manager, manager. These are all different roles. Some of you say that, hey, I have this. I don't need to know all this. How can I position myself? These are real things I will need. That way you position yourself, hey, you might be able to doing product management as your one of the thing, hey, and I really like to, to own this, but I don't need, I want to manage people. I don't want to do any uh, other communication, but I want to take the ownership something. And then if I take the ownership of, of something, I'm really good at doing that. That's product manager role within uh, the Dynamics 365. So you say that that role, maybe you can take it. Somebody might say, hey, I wanna, I like to manage people. Also, I wanna coach, mentor people, program manager, right? So that's the role you're like taking. But at the same time, as we are going to do some of those experience session, our that time you are going to say, hey, maybe you're going to shifting product manager, management to program management or program lead doesn't matter. It's all interchangeable depending on how big impl implementation it is. Okay. Is that your question so far? And the delivery lead, those who know the was delivery yeah. lead, anybody yeah. knows here what the delivery lead does usually? Yes. We, basically, whatever the timeline that we set in the project, MS project, there is some, it, it helps to see if the project is lagging or you need to get in some good resources, the critical path management and all those stuff. Yes, you are on the right track, exactly. Delivery lead is not a project manager. Those who think project manager know delivery lead is making sure just keeping the business happy, business who is writing check and also business who is a sponsor, who is your kind of supporter that you are delivering your work, your people are doing a good work and you create, you are keeping your brand is nice, Henrik. So those are the things he does, you know, delivery lead behind the scene. He doesn't need to be in every single place. He is the main guy. Thing goes wrong, it's his fault. Thing goes it's, good. <laughs> right? He is responsible to keep the light on. 
Yep, right. <laughs> Tal, yep, yeah, exactly. He's the responsible for everything, you know, we pretty much at the top. But sometimes so in Scrum basically in Scrum basically the person who is the main uh, they call sometimes is the most uh, active person in the Scrum lead. Same way, right? Yes. Delivery lead. They are You're delivery right? lead have a scrum lead, scrum coach, and then all the others or everybody report to him. This is the guy, everyone comes to it. And most of the time, depending on how big the implementation, this, deliver months. this delivery lead is way more above than uh, anyone else. Because sometimes, you know, they have to have 10 different projects running on, on, on Dynamics 365 or, or your ERP implementation. This guy has to make sure he has to be aware of that. Okay? I, I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, is it similar to the uh, any resource who also manages the release management? Uh, not that that so or happens on the program manager or project project manager. Delivery lead does not go through any that level. Think of delivery lead is in a way in a company CEO type of role. It's taking oh. top level, but all the others is general major generals. So everybody support him. Okay. It's like a CTO, yes? It's the manager of the all the project managers. Right, and I, in a way, when the CTO is to know the technology vision, but CTO does not know the finance, right? He doesn't know that the budget is running out or not. Do we have the CapEx, that investment? That's usually CIO knows that, right? Yes, maybe it's CIO because delivery, it's very... Uh, uh, you're, yep, you're right. CIO is more like CIO role than uh, anything else. Correct, because he's always CIO, always in touch with CEO. So <laughs> CEO, okay. Now, do we have uh, to, to invest in our technology or in our people? What do we need in order for or for business or CEOs to increase his profitability, increase his shareholder value, increase his the brand recognition, whatever that is, right? Then he goes to CIO. So it's delivery lead similar to that. So this is what we, are, we will be covering throughout this. So as you can see, that next three months is not enough. So that's why my plan of doing these classes is like one day or a week, we are going to be dedicating one day, two days, try to giving you guys skill area, job skill area from ERP side, CRM area, and make sure you understand. And then it's going to be a coaching mentoring session. And then some of you say, can you take a look at my resume? So we'll have a professional resume writer also with us to go through this, help you once we know your story is clear, that which side you are getting. And then we are going to work with you in coaching mentoring session that focus on this area, because this is your strength. And make sure as we go touch different areas, you can highlight those skills or those experience and also get some hands-on experience so you can kind of position yourself for those roles. Does that make sense? Yes. And those yes. who said, hey, can you take a look at my resume and I have this and some of you might be even going above and beyond and then you might also take an exam. You, do, you will not wait till full time because the sessions you're going to be missing out or some of you because of other responsibility you're going to have as we are going to meet three times a week that you know not everybody is going to be joining every session. You are going to go back and watch the recording and then make sure that you are up to speed. And then you might take even more initiative to go ahead and, and be more prepared and take the exam. If that's also okay, is done, you will be better off or better positioned to put yourself in the job. Share with you that you see the average salary. Now you go look at it, right? So you can this is you can see hey average salary what makes you know you should be able to position yourself that. But if you even go below average, still there will be a decent salary that you can make, you know, and then you can put yourself in that position. Let's say in like a few months take the exam we pass a resume looks good you know you've helped us along the way um are, are these jobs available through these uh job applications or you have like an internal or you have a group where you would help us uh yep so, 
We got good questions. Are they job when you said, you know, you saw a solution architect right now? I have a project that I'm r running. I am the delivery lead. Just want to let you guys know for this <laughs> working from home 100 percent. So with that, currently I have more than 60 people in my team. I have three solution architect. And out of three solution architect, two of them I'm looking to replace. Because they're not meeting my standard, right? <laughs> so <laughs> some of them ended up finding a job, but if you are not able to deliver what I'm asking or what we need business, then of course I'm, when business, I like, what do you need? I said, this guy's not meeting my need. Look at, he's not able to do this. So let's look, replacement, okay? So not everybody solution architect. So, and, and there are a lot of roles are more like, just making sure you understand the requirement. Remember, making sure you understand the requirement, making sure that uh, you know that what we need to do. So nowadays it's not how, because Microsoft already gave you the platform. All you need to understand how it works. Tons of Microsoft free training is out there, but all you just like, all the stuff you have free out there or resource out there, how is going to help us to use the, like their services? If their service is capable of doing so many things, but then our service is different because every organization, the way they conduct business is different. Can we, what level of customization we need to do? If this architect cannot tell me, then it's just like, oh, what kind of architect he is at, right? I got it, thank you. See, I have many people coming in right now that's, oh, machine, we have to do custom development. So why do we need to do custom development? Because you have to write code. So just those who is in IT, understand this. Micro, as Microsoft is getting, focusing more and more cloud-based, they are making their cloud platform, Dynamics 365, so powerful that all day they used to have product called Microsoft Dynamics Great Plains, Microsoft Navigation. Microsoft uh, Solomon, and uh, Solomon, and then Microsoft um, and then uh, Exapta. Have you guys heard of those products? Dynamics Exapta. Someone in this room, I'm sure, heard about these names, right? Somebody I've heard, heard of Great Plains. Okay. All right. Let's say this. somebody heard of Great Plains. But what happened? Microsoft put all those products into bundle into one Dynamics 365. Now everything is now, they just rebranded everything into the, in one solution where Microsoft competing with SAP. You all heard about SAP, at least some of you, many of you heard about SAP, right? Yeah. It's, yes. Uh, yes. This is huge Microsoft. Huge company. Yes, huge company. Now look at a, a SAP 20 years ago. What was the market value of SAP? They were the leader. Now today, look at SAP stock price today. 20 years ago versus today. Why is that, <laughs> right? Because of this, my, there is a new players like Microsoft come along later on and they are buying acquisition on a small company here and there. They're making their product so powerful then people saying, why do I wanna invest so much money with that? Here, I can do it small investment. Dynamics made it so easy that you do not need to get all this right away. All it somebody can spend fifty dollars a month, hundred dollars a month to Microsoft buy five license, they will have Dynamics 365. Pretty much upfront cost their cap or access very low. Then what do they need? They need people like others, you know, who others who is in service business. Now make sure to understand their business, uh, communicate their business to them, and then help them to customize that Dynamics CRM or dynamics and field service or dynamics financial and marketing whatever the module or area they need to improve that's their entry to that erp world same time what they are doing that you know those who know the salesforce in crm they are looking into area salesforce is so too expensive and then once the data is there, it kind of stay within that platform and they, that helps sales team do their job very well but then the other part, operation team and their research team, R&D team and support team is all disconnected. So that's when they said, no, okay, we're going to now go away from the Salesforce, go something more inexpensive and make their 
solution as more eco-friendly and business friendly yeah. that way everybody is under one umbrella they are doing or, the data sharing oracle uh, do the same yes right oracle is going after the same thing but second they buy, right they buy it nets net suit uh, i don't remember the system like erp right exactly so this is what i was trying to tell you look you know this everybody is trying to get into but if you even google it you will see at the end when it comes to business they're looking they're looking something like depending on what your role right they are looking they want to get some dashboard do you guys all you guys know show me my data business says show me my data i can i can click on it you see that if i click on, i can drill down this data i can go and next and see what's really happening you can break it down the prp world microsoft oracle and sap these three the top biggest player and they're just taking microsoft is slowly slowly moving up at the top S because sap uh, in, in which cloud it's work sap have their own cloud but sap partnered with part i do not know which cloud they're using amazon or they're using oracle i do not know but you know okay. nowadays a lot of them are buying this uh, amazon cloud or they're using uh let's say oracle cloud and then okay. microsoft cloud also many of them are using microsoft cloud and then they are offering their service so sap also going in the cloud mode but microsoft is taking over many many jobs and sales, salesforce only crm they don't have erp yes correct for, so, for, for now for now for now but salesforce from the day one their goal is supporting crm sales enable the sales team right that's their core but that's the are they going to be changing business model of course depending on the pressure and peer pressure and there's a market share everybody trying to get a little bit right <laughs> so yeah they might coming in so uh any uh other questions do you guys have i'm looking i have five more minutes to answer your question and to make sure that you know people who said you know what is this going to be the training so it's not only just like job or, or training or the technical skills it's going to be business skill is going to be coaching side so i feel there will be more and more coaching and mentoring going to happen because this product is so versatile a lot of people they say okay i really don't like this i really don't like this what's what can i do so hopefully together we all can come up with a way that you position yourself what you really like to do right and that's going to help you to take a role this is like such a big projects or big implementation if not this client there are some other clients you can position yourself uh, i know that i did not know if swetha is still in the room is swetha still in the room oh she, she is yes i am <laughs> Hey, I know that you do some QA stuff long time ago, yeah, you, and also you have some project management experience, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you familiar with Selenium? Um, just at a very high level because it involves automation, and in my projects, I haven't used Selenium yet. Yes. So I just wanted to tell you and others who is thinking. So as we are going to do in QA side, some of the functional tests, create the script and stuff, we are going to be doing some Selenium. Am I going to train that? No, I not. But I might be able to bring somebody, hey, and do a quick you know, Selenium uh, training and make sure people know how to do that, right? So that will also help those who said, hey, I'm in QA, but how can I position myself in Dynamics 365, right? So then pretty much knowing one script, this is how you do functional functional test very and get approval from the business and then during the sprint in each agile in scrum mode sprint that you stay closely with the program and then when you position yourself then you're positioning yourself in a way that hey now this is what i had experience before but recently i i i did uh, dynamics 365 i have certification and position yourself in qa and in the QA, you can go on the functional side, and you can go go on the on on that um, automation side. And my team, my team, I have a bunch of QA guy team members. So 
So that's why I called out for you, Swetha, because what I did, I took my QA team, said, you guys are going to be doing some business um, analysis work. They all just said, what? So this is what you're going to do. So I had um, them to go through in the business, make sure when they come up with a user story, repeat it back to them in five, if they need to do five times, make sure they understand that user story is, is clear, right? And then if every every time, there are those user stories not clear. You know, in business, sometimes they use the term, oh, you know, we have this uh, transaction happen, this transaction and somebody call in fraud and so. But then how often it happens? They don't know. Sometimes they know that it happened, but they don't know what in five years, if I can go back, how many times it happened? Thousand times, so I, one in thousand times is not a business critical <laughs> requirement, is it? Guys, Swetha, it's not, right? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again, please. I say one time, once in thousand times, if it happens, an incident yes. happens, mm -hmm. and it's not a business priority one requirement, right? So yes. with my QA team, this is what I'm doing. I'm just getting them, find out who does it in the operation, sit down and ask them this type of questions. So give them a set of questions. When they come back, this is not a requirement. This is not a requirement. Dump them out from the requirement side in agile mode. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. then our QA team becomes now more business analysis and business analyst. Then I see that some of my QA members, oh, I can be in a business analyst. I say, you are a business analyst. <laughs> you know? so, no, I so. think uh, just to add here, like QA is more like a middle, middle person who needs to understand the business requirement as well as the actual flow of the applications as well. So they can identify the, you know, the testing strategy and also the scope to make sure that application is working as expected based on requirements. Right. So it gives them more, enables them more powerful and also gives them confidence that they can do job besides QA. So that's what I am trying to tell you that those who said, hey, QA is the quickest way to entry this world, but same time you can do other take other roles depending on the how big the project it is, right? Mm -hmm. On Dynamics yeah. 365. So that's what we'll be covering, okay? Um, and um, now I'm going to be closing up again. Then uh, some people did ask me and just make sure that, you know, uh, people, when people say, I did not know, I had a bunch of people uh, tells me I did not know, I did not know, I said, look, you know, I'm not doing it to make me rich. You know, I already shared with you our website. You can go make any contribution or whatever contribution you can go in the registration side. We broke down depending on your need. And we heard you last. This is the fourth or fifth session I'm doing that, hey, you know, how much a program like this cost? Initially, I did a survey with other people who does in the community this type of program. None of them told me I should charge less than 10000 people told me because based on what I'm bringing to the table, then my intention is not doing that because I, I do not want to get that much. I do not want to also uh, make it a burden on you. So to support our charity that what I run every week that, you know, Sweta and a couple others also came, joined me every week, every month when we do the, the charity session, Food Bank. I have over 150 p families that I'm serving in Central Jersey. Overseas, we have more than 20, a, a day average 800 to 1,000 people we feed. So you look at the numbers that it costs money, guys. You know, in the past I used to have people supported, but this economy made a lot of people broke that they are not generously support. So then I had to find a way that how we can continue support the charity, and that's when I said, okay, I'm going to be charging this because we are 501c. You can take a tax credit, and and also some of you have a company, you can company match program, so many other program that you can do. That's why I'm doing this program. And then if somebody is going through some difficulty, of course the registration link and all the stuff I put in the, in the Google document, you can go through it, all the options. And if you need to have some more clarification, more details, more help or helping hand, reach out to me, who will help you, support you, okay? That's all I have. And, and the guys, you know, lastly people tell me that I have this, I have that, I have that. Can I do it? 
what I can tell you that all of you know that, you know, it's up to you. Can you do it? And I know that I am the living example of this something very new that I not only learned it, that recently I positioned myself on the delivery lead for what I just told the role I am, right? But same thing happened when I was telling other people, they all kept saying, you know, oh, mush is difficult, 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 this, that, that. Then I just thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to do it myself. And then you're going to see that. So with that, so some, some people already got the job as I was mentoring and coaching them. So my goal is, yes, you can. It's all up to you, right? Just not, not like, how can I do it? If you say, I am going to do it. I am doing it. I will do it. So if your mentality is not, I can't, I will, you will be able to get the job you want. And the demand is huge, guys. You all see that nowadays. Digitalization, transformation, uh, the project, any digitalization transformation project coming in, you are getting in with Dynamics 365. But I don't want to go SAP. I don't want any of the, all I want to put myself on the Dynamics 365 because I know Microsoft is going, so, investing so much. People are reducing their capex upfront cost to buy all of this, but they are increasing more money to job creation in, in service side. And that's demand is much higher than regular. That's it for this episode, folks. Thank you for listening. And if it was helpful to you, please click the like button and follow us so that you can listen to more of our podcast. You can also visit us at urbanhood.org to learn more about our other programs. We hope you'll check in with us again. And until then, keep learning and do whatever it takes to reach financial freedom and follow your dreams.